What a crunch time play. Higgins, that's why he's got championships wherever he plays. Barça en finale. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It's FC Barcelona. Uno más. Uno más. Uno más, Dios. Uno, dos, tres. Barça. Get in foul trouble because we're playing good D, that's one thing against any. But if we're bullshitting, that's that's another fucking thing. We're bullshitting. Yeah. But 48 hours, we need to we need to get some mental work. Yeah. Yeah. For once, waiting doesn't feel so bad, huh? It's been a lot of different. <laughs> it's crazy, right? One, one shot. One shot. Yeah, make, one it break. Break. make it break it. Make it break it. Yeah. You did it. So that was good, eh? Wow. <laughs> I had my head like when the Panther was like boom. <laughs> and I saw you. Uh, okay. Great win, man. Oof. This was tough, eh? This is why I like basketball, you know? This is why I like basketball. FS is our opponent, the same team from 2019 that we played them to the finals. Uh, they have a certain qualities. Everybody can score from the perimeter. That makes them already uh, having a, a lot of uh, versatile game. They're very competitive on boards. They're very competitive on defensive end. A great team to, to play against. Cheska is a great club. What I know that in the last 16 years they played 15 times the final four, and also like coach uh, Itudis, uh, like a head coach position, he won uh, two titles in the Euroleague, and they had also Clyburn, one of the best players uh, in the Euroleague. They finished the regular season <coughs> in front of us on the second position. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the Lanxess Arena of Cologne for the semi-final game of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. The first adjustment of Listen, so all season we talk about the title. So every meeting after every EuroLeague game, we talk that step by step, the title, we work for title, let's go for the title. And uh, we know that, so two months ago, we beat them by 30 points in Istanbul. Of course, so every game is different, but he got us a lot of confidence. Awaiting to contest this opening tip. Oh, well, Will Clyburn getting it to go. He is feeling it. Shane Larkin slices his way to the hole, takes him to seven points in the game. Oh, what a feed as Sertak Shanley cuts to the bucket. Terrific handles once again as Mitzic pulled the trigger, count the bucket. A miraculous play from Vasilya Mitzic. 20 points in the third quarter. It's something, eh? <laughs> in semi final. Don't switch in advance. Play him. Oh, and it's layup practice now for Anadolu FS Istanbul. And look at the glum faces over on the Seska sideline. And rocks the rim. A roar of delight over on the FS sideline from Brian Dunstan. Oh, well, everything falling for Anadolu FS Istanbul. 15 minutes after the final. It's complicated, eh? Because the CSK, I don't know, if they put it now... If we have a belief, we can do it. 
If we have a belief, we can do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Ife is now on the zone. We got to give him the ball and then we'll create after that. He's going to create things. Will is going to take that. Danny's going over there. Will, pretty much, you create on your right hand. If you don't have it, go with Vanya and hand it off. Vanya, be ready. Maybe continues with you. So Anadolu FS Istanbul, 15 points the advantage. Seska yet to find their flow. Richard. Richard. You're fine. But don't stop to make defense. I will give you one minute. Don't stop to defense. Will Clyburn is a, is a great player, and uh, we saw that the first time we played against him in the, in the Final Four uh, in the championship game. And uh, I was just thinking, man, he has to cool off at some point. Like, he's, he's scoring everything. It was the entire game. And I was like, I was like, this, this can't happen again, you know? Oh, my goodness. Oof. Plenty of aggression on that take to the bucket from Will Clyburn. Will Clyburn slicing to the hole. Clyburn was uh, unstoppable. So I tried to stop him with Doge, Balbay, with Singleton, with Weirman. I tried everything, but we didn't find the way. He made uh, one of the best uh, game, uh, especially on the last quarter, that I saw this year in the Euroleague. Turning in the lane oh. and getting the circus shot to go is Will Clyburn, 22 points on the game. CSK has a tremendous history and a lot of legacy. This is what I ask for my players, to give their best self. Actually, to respect the game itself, because when you respect something, you, you may get respect back. Offensive foul is the call, and Daniel Hackett, his defensive prowess coming to the fore once again. Oh! That's what I'm talking about. We need 35 minutes to understand that that's the charge that I was asking for. I didn't start the game, and you know, I've never been a guy who is gonna complain about these things, and whatever, it is what it is. You know, coming into that weekend, this second time around in Cologne, I was like, okay, these are the moments why. Like, to be the guy, to have the responsibility to, you know, help carry my team to become a champion. But, you know, though I didn't start the game, in our strategy, in the second part of the season, we used Larkin from the bench. And uh, also in this semi-final, maybe he was ready to start the game, but uh, I didn't want to change to our strategy in the semi-final. And we go on the court with Larkin on the bench. And then when Larkin come back to the game, start to play, he didn't find to his tempo, his, his game. It's frustrating, because I'm like, the last time we were here, I literally played amazing. I broke every single record. I, I didn't really understand what, what he was doing. It's frustrating because as a player, you want to be out there and help the team. On the last quarter, when the, the problem starts, so we need Larkin, and I put him again on the court. I think that he scored only, he made only one three-point shot in five, six shots. And then he was very upset. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Everybody knows that he's a very psychological player. Larkin is a different uh, character, very psychological. And then eventually I get in the game, and if you watch that game, F.A. Lundberg, he scored a couple baskets, and then I got in the game, and then he made a three in my face. I'm out! I'm out! And then Coach called a timeout and then he screamed at me. Holy fuck! You can't play 20 minutes! You can't play 20 minutes! And then that whole thing happened and we kind of just blew up on each other in that moment. What you want? What you want? I hit in his fucking face. What you want? And I was like, what are you screaming at me for? Dude, I just got in the game. Like, I just got in the game. He scored one basket on me and you're screaming at me. You ready? Game are continue. Be ready. Game are continue. I can't wait. Be ready. Yes, Vasily Mitsic replacing Doge was, you know, trying to be their captain. You know, always trying to be positive. Brian was talking to me. The assistants were talking to me, trying to just keep my mind in the game. Trying to keep my mind in the game. Um, and then, you know, Vasa fouled out with, I think, three minutes left or something. And I was on the bench again. And then. Let's get the charge for us! Let's get one charge! Down by two. It's in the hands of the 2019 one, Final one, Four one. MVP, Will Clyburn. He settles for a pull-up three. It's off the front iron, and the rebound has been wrapped up by Shane Larkin. 
and that could well be the ball game. What a magnificent battle we have just witnessed here at the Laxness Arena. Obviously, as a captain, one of my job is to keep everybody on the same page. Uh, sometimes I can be the bridge uh, between the coaches and the players. You don't care what we say. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. We trust him. Uh, we know what he's done for us. We are a family. We have sometimes different opinions. We discuss. But at the end of the day, we're under the same roof and uh, we solve problems. Brate! I'm confused. Too many things going on. <laughs> Um, it was really tense because um, you know we need Shane and we need Coach. You know, so we don't we don't need anybody uh, at that moment to be against each other. Shane made two of the biggest plays in that game at the end of the game, and you know if he wasn't focused on the game, he probably wouldn't have got those. So um, you know, it's it's really like big respect to Shane for keeping his head locked in, and big respect for Coach for keeping him in the game because he could have taken him out of the game and just left him on the bench or whatever, and then that would have been it. You know, when you're close like that, you're going to get into some things. Family gets into some things. But you always have to be bigger and, and find a way to get through it and, uh, and see the bigger picture at the end. Now it's over this game. Uh, we have a lot of stress with uh, some players. So I apologize because everybody has a stress. We need everybody now. We lost the final in 2019. We lost the final. Now, again, we are, we are there. We will play the final. We deserve to win. If we play like we played in the first three quarters, our defense, our offense, we will take this title and we deserve about this. Take rest, mentally be ready for the final. Let's go. Uh, that night, I think, we had a conversation or whatever. He tried to explain whatever he thought. I explained what I thought. And then he was like, OK, well, you know, now we're going to the championship game. I'm going to put you in the first five. I made a short meeting with uh, five minutes with him. I gave him all the confidence. And I remember that he's the best player in the EuroLeague last two years. I told him that you will be in the picture of the starting five of the final of this game because you deserved it. Because if FS is in that level in the last three years, you are the first player to deserve to be in the starting five in the, this final game. Putting me back out there the way that I believed I should have been out there in the semifinal, in that final game, gave me that freedom or gave, took that relief off my shoulders. Like, okay, now I can go be me. Meanwhile, I'm still in the hotel with my work and pleasure. <laughs> Let's see where we stand. We are 48 hours from the championship game. The best two teams in the competition are ready for the big game. Don't forget that Nika Lattes, a key player for FC Barcelona, may be injured. Will his injury have an impact on his performance in the championship game? Toda mañana me hacía fotos con los pivots ah, ahí. Conmigo vas mejor. Madre mía, vine, sí. le di un abrazo a Molutino, metí mi cara sí, en claro. su sobaco. Y yo digo, ostras, sí. claro, yo soy grande. Yo donde trabajo, yo soy grande. Sí, no, pero no, pero claro, cuando te con estos... Aquí. Tengo un amigo, también actor en la serie, que le gusta fútbol y va claro, mucho a los partidos. Y él mide 1,90 y se hace foto con Messi, con Rakitic, con estos, y parece un gigante. Y luego me ve a mí una foto con Tavares, una foto con Datome, una foto con esta, sí, y parezco un enano. Y me dijo, cambia del deporte, tío. Tú vives de imagen, digo. Vale. No se puede cambiar así. No, 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 a mí me gusta básquet. 
¿Estás contento con la, la, ha tenido éxito la serie esta? ¿eh? La casa de papel ha sido... La contento es poco lo ha petado, decir. ¿eh? Y de repente ahora... Cuando, es un boom, ¿no? Boom. Todo el mundo te conoce, todo el mundo... Sí, sí, sí. Claro, yo lo estoy disfrutando porque, claro, a mí me gusta baloncesto y mucha gente... Ah, pero no sabía. Digo, pero claro, no me conocías. No sabías que yo iba al Palau, que iba a la Olímpica ahí viendo los partidos. Claro, no me veías, no me conocías. <risa> ah, a ver, yo estoy aquí... Para mí esto es como un sueño. Qué yo bien. estuve en Belgrado. Que ¿En esto, la Final Four estuviste? La primera, mi primera Final Four fue en Belgrado. Y para dices, mí sí. fue un sueño de volver a Serbia, que yo me fui con 18 años de Serbia. ¿Y no habías nunca, vuelto? Nunca trabajé, no. Yo ¿No? nunca trabajé en Serbia. Y fue mi primer trabajo justo con el baloncesto, <ríe> con todo. Y Qué ahora, bien. claro, y ahora estar otra vez aquí en la Final Four. Bueno, has eh, podido ver la diferencia, ¿no? Con público y sin público, ¿eh? Sin fans. Esto es todo el mundo que dice, sin el público, eso, eso. Eh, yo falta? estoy acostumbrado, porque mi trabajo es enfrente de la cámara y claro. detrás solo equipo técnico, como ahora juegan los jugadores, sí. no hay <ríe> público, pero para ellos, yo estaba es... hablando con varios jugadores, es otra experiencia. me decía Mirotic que él jugaba, al principio era tan raro porque él jugaba así cuando era niño, <ríe> enfrente de sus padres, a algún entrenador, sí, sí, sí. pero claro. Todo es una experiencia muy, muy distinta. Y, y realmente yo diría muy triste, muy triste. Sí, sí, Para sí. nosotros muy triste. Y lo hemos echado mucho de menos. Y nosotros, los jugadores, todo el mundo lo ha echado de menos, ¿no? Yo justo ahora he acabado de, de rodar la serie, ¿Sí? unas semanas antes, Ajá. y con el tema de COVID, nosotros como vosotros, ha sido muy lo mismo. ¿no? Claro, nosotros nos cancelaron el estreno, nos cancelaron el principio de rodaje, fue todo pospuesto. Yo creo que a nivel... De, de organización fueron unas decisiones complicadas, ¿no? Muy de complicado. tomarlas, de sí. hacerla. Sí. Final Four, ¿no? Hablando bueno, de... hace, teníamos que hacerlo, porque es que después del año pasado teníamos que, 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 que volver a lo más pronto sí. posible, porque, claro, desde marzo del, del año 20 no, no había habido baloncesto. Y todos los clubes sabían que este año no nos podíamos permitir eh, no terminar. Terminarlo. Y entonces, claro. Empezamos pensando mucho que los problemas serían de viajes, porque en agosto y septiembre parecía que lo que iba a ser más problemático es viajar de un país al otro. Y esto lo resolvimos bastante bien. Y entonces empezamos con lo, con lo que no pensábamos tanto, que es que fueran jugadores con, digamos, con positivos. Que pensábamos que los clubes conseguirían digamos, crear una burbuja, burbuja dentro de, del club, del equipo. Pero claro, es muy difícil porque al final todo el mundo tiene su vida privada, su vida familiar y esto es muy complicado. Y tuvimos incluso que cambiar las reglas una vez empezada la temporada. Imagínate tú qué cosa más rara, ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. Nunca sí, lo había sí, visto sí. yo en esto, ¿no? Pues lo tuvimos que hacer. Y, y al final, bueno, pues eh, haciendo cosas muy extrañas, eh, cambiando partidos cada semana y haciendo jugar equipos pues quizá tres veces en una semana entre su liga doméstica y nosotros. Sí, sí, sí. Pero bien. al final hemos llegado aquí el día que teníamos que estar. No, <risa> el mismo bien. día. Sí, 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 sí. No, no, con un esfuerzo impresionante. Sí. You know, I played against Gasol in the NBA. Um, but that was my first time actually having a, a lengthy conversation with him, one of the best basketball players ever. Um, you know, my journey is a little bit different, but for us both to be there as, you know, star players of our teams going into this big matchup, I mean, that was huge for me. And, you know, I have a picture with Paul Gasol in the beginning of a, you know, final four weekend in Europe, you know, fist bumping in front of the EuroLeague Championship trophy. That's like, that's super cool, right? Okay. Es una pregunta para el señor Jesse Kevichus. Víctor Labañini, Televisión de Cataluña. ¿Cuál es el estado físico de Nica Lates? Bueno, Nica ha hecho pruebas, no tiene nada grave. Uh, yo creo que mañana por la noche será decisión de partido. Y antes del partido vamos a ver cómo está y decidiremos si puede jugar o no. Está claro que es nuestro, nuestro cerebro, ¿no? Uh, el, el jugador que lleva equipo, pero bueno, a lo largo de temporada hemos tenido otras bajas, hemos tenido que poner jugadores en su sitio. Yo creo que es un poco next man mentality, ¿no? Eh, si uno es de baja, pues tiene que jugar otro y esto no es ninguna excusa. Tenemos que hacer, intentar uh, hacer buen partido y, y ganar partido, pero a lo, a lo, 
Si me preguntas si condiciona preparación y partido, pues claramente que sí. Thank you, coach. Next question, your hoops, uh, Bugra Uzar, please. Paul, I know you already made a comment about your late friend Kobe Bryant's pre-game mentality, but if he was here right now, and what would he tell you? I'm just, I'm just trying to do, like, like I said, I'm trying to enjoy this. I'm trying to do my best. Um, Kobe played as hard as he could, and uh, he was always himself until the very last game. So, uh, so just, just get after it, you know. Um, you know, he was um, special, one of the greatest players ever, if not the greatest for, for me. So. Um, Now, um, hopefully he'll be, he'll be watching. You know, I was a child watching, not a child, but I was a young man or a young teenager watching this guy win NBA Finals, like, watching him, like, with Kobe Bryant, like, big time. And now here I am, years later, playing against him in the yearly championship. It was just, like, another moment for me that I just, like, had to take a step back from that and be like, you know, this is amazing, right? Yeah, but fast, fast, because if I do it with you, everybody's gonna come, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, Two times, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. I grew up with this. My, my apartment was like 200 meters from the Danube. And Danube at my place, it's, let's say, maybe twice bigger than this. The smell of the river is also different. I mean, if you're born by the sea, the smell of the sea is characteristic, you know? But me, as I'm born by the river, the smell is also... You know, my grandfather, he was a sailor. He was going from Black Sea up to Hamburg by the river, Danube, and then the canals. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You don't want to shoot her jumping or what? Now! Ah. Oh my god! Come on, Darko! Your reputation is on the line! Come on, hit that shot! Let's go. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 44 years. <laughs> okay. You want to see from where? Look at Onchi so. Step back. <laughs> Look, Abrate. Excuse me for the comparison. <laughs> I get ahead of myself. I'm sorry. No way, man. This one is the last. I'm gonna cry. This one is the last one, definitely. Come on, dear basketball. Don't make me look bad in front of my fans. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. How is the yeah? Good, good. <laughs> For now, I think I'm only gonna get selfies in public. No basketball. Oh my god. It's so great. Yeah. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Oh, I'm so looking forward. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. The last time I came to Cologne was many years ago to a music festival. I have changed a bit since then, but my love for basketball remains the same. We are 24 hours away from the championship game. The best two teams in Europe, face to face. FC Barcelona is led by superstars like Mirotic, Higgins and Davis, all coached by my dear friend Sharas. They are a great team, but not very experienced in finals. In front of them is Anadolu FS Istanbul, led by the competition's MVP, Vasily Micic, part of the great backcourt duo that also includes Shane Larkin. 
FS has been the best team in the competition for the last two years. One question remains, who will win the EuroLeague title? In the hotel, especially on Saturday night, for myself, I have too much confidence. And in this team, we are like family. You know, everybody know each other very well, and everybody know uh, when other player angry or upset, they know how to help him. Simon, Micic, they are very close. When they have up and downs, so they know how to cover this. And everybody like each other. This team has strong chemistry. They know each other very well. And they know which day, what they have to do and what they want. This is our power, I think. In the beginning of the season, we have four players COVID positive. Sertac Şanlı has COVID positive. So after this uh, infection, he needs to continue Turkish League and EuroLeague together. So he needs time to recover. For a player, long period affects him much more than the others because he's tall. So um, this kind of infection maybe do nothing as a pathology, but make physiological decrease. As we know, the COVID include me. I, I also infected. So it affects everybody at different level. So important thing is that because of we don't know also the reaction of this virus, you know, into the body. Sometimes we did like nothing happened. Like, you know, keeping, keeping, keep working in the same, same way. Because it's also, you know, to make you in a psychologic loop. You know, because um, physiologically, even they come back, they've recovered fully. Because psychologically, they, f they feel tired sometimes, you know. Um, sometimes it's the best way, actually, not putting too much things on something, you know. I mean, it was okay. They, they, everybody wanted to be a champion, so. They adapt it and work well after it. Our main sentences for the last season, nerede kalmıştık. That means last season we are champion. This season we will be we will hold the cup. Okay, we have COVID infection all the world, but when we stay together, we can handle this, and this cup will be us. Uh, whatever we did, we did uh, with love, you know, and patience and coming for successful. Announced two years ago that uh, the final four is in uh, Germany. We were very happy because we know that Germany, Köln, is uh, like a Turkish city, but with the restriction, hard restriction, of the Germany. These four people that they arrive uh, in front of the hotel gave us uh, emotion. Four people. We wait maybe 4,000 uh, in the arena, maybe 14,000 in the arena. But that four people gave us also energy, motivation.
ahí. Ahí. Vale. And I think this time around in Cologne, you had guys talking, you know, you had guys joking around. We were more loose. I think, you know, we were more calm in the locker room. I just felt like there was no way. There's no, uh, there's no way we're gonna lose this time. This kind of game, you wanna, you wanna make sure that you're ready. But it's not easy because everybody talk about you. There was a lot of media, so it's not easy. But the goal, I think, is to stay as relaxed as possible and focus on the task. And the task is to play basketball the way you know how to play. This is our second time there as a team. All of us understood that maybe, maybe some guys didn't give their best um, on the court the first time that they were there, so they were completely focused the next time. The presentations, you know, they always give you a lot of energy. You know, you hear the names, you see the dancing, you hear the music, you see the DJs, you know, you see everything going on. You don't feel any pain in your body. You don't feel any, you know, tiredness from the long season. You don't feel any of that. You just go out there and you have 100% energy and excitement um, to go out there and give it everything you have to, to win that game. At forward, wearing number two, Chris Singleton. The one thing that I believe for the life, you need to stay always humble and you need to stay always under the radar, because like that you always have opportunity to think normally. If you are thinking that you are above someone, very soon you get back to reality that somebody beats you unexpectable or because especially in Final Four, it's all about one game. Only the important thing is that you just have to have something that you believe in, like peace, some peace. We just knew why we were there. So it's just like, just don't think, just play. And um, hopefully you've done enough, uh, and, and hopefully you can help your team enough to, to help you win at the end. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lancet Arena of Cologne for the championship game of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. We take a look at the starting five for FS. Shane Larkin, Vasilya Micic, and Krinislav Simone. Sertak Shanley and Chris Singleton forming the front line. And Nick Kalathis, despite turning that right angle significantly, strapping it up, biting down, and saying that he is ready to go. So buckle up and enjoy the ride in this championship game of the 2020-2021 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season. Big hand from Brandon Davies, the takeaway and finishing with the jam. For you, Corey. Rounded in the low post, Corey Higgins with the corner, oh. Jay, nothing but net. Listen, we start the game very bad. The game was very intense. Barcelona was uh, playing very aggressive defense. They were together, they were um, all together defensively, so it was uh, causing us some problems. Bouvoir working the dribble, going against Balmaros. Bounce pass fortuitously makes its way out to Singleton. Barca came, came up really ready to play this final game and to stop our offensive weapons like Simon, uh, Misic and uh, Larkin. Schmitz hedging out to help. They played uh, really excellent defense on Misic and um, you know, luckily Sertaz was able to, to, to take some pressure off of him. Look at this here, Chandler. The confidence this young man has got under the pressure of Miritic there. Right there! Let's go! If we're going to give them highway, it's going to be a problem. We've got to defend. Don't just force him into the guard. And there's another finish from Sertak Shanley. Six points in the game. Hey! Come on! Brandon Davies. Three offensive rebounds. Hey, together. Three offensive rebounds. I remember first quarter, even we are down, I don't know, six points, eight points, ten points, first quarter. We are, we are still sure, you know, that this is our game and this is our time. Bruno out, Brian out, Tibor and Shane in. Offensively, we attack to Paul Gasol, attack to him, okay? Paul, they will attack with the pick and pop. I remember we are down by ten points, almost same history. I tell him, 
you'll be ready. And he changed the momentum. He put the fire. Tibor Plyce hits the trifecta. I always try to be ready. I mean, in the first game I didn't play it, and I thought like, okay, <laughs> it was kind of like the same situation like uh, in the in the games in the series against Madrid. Timor, Timor, Timor! Terrific defensive rebound, Tibor play. I just played eight minutes. We can't play American football. We can't play American football. Tibor Plyce from the corner and he rattles it home here in his home city tonight. Two points for Tibor Plyce. Plyce, yes. What an impact he has made at both ends of the floor. Directly he helped the team. He, he made five points also. Very critical rebounds or blocks or defense. And then he changed the team and then hurts. I jumped up, uh, tried to rebound and came down and then I just felt something like my muscle um, gave up for one second and I, I knew already like, eh, that's it. Oh, seleccionado, it plays, okay. Oh. I feel there is something, but in muscle is different, you know. Sometimes you can handle it, sometimes. And we check, that time, oh, it's, it's not possible, you cannot play. We try, we make tapes, okay, we give medicine, but... I felt uh, that the team was behind me, like everybody said, like, hey, you did your job. For me, the beginning of the third quarter is very important, especially when the game is was four points, five points. If you start well, you have a chance to break the game. And uh, Micic lead the team in that uh, situations for this uh, part of the game. Oh, wow. what body control from Vasilya Mitic. How on earth did he do this? Vasilya Mitic clobbered on the three-pointer and still able to connect. And no dispute, that's a foul. For que crees que es MVP? <laughs> the reason why I stayed the most of the time in Ephes was exactly that freedom that I got from the coach. And that happened in the third quarter with all my weapons that I'm trying to improve every, every day with the practice and uh, uh, to try something new to involve in my game. It actually happened in that game in the third quarter. Reach it, move! Reach it! Mitzic and slicing his way to the hole to finish with a Statue of Liberty finger roll. 15 points in the game. This is his secret, he told me today. La música que escucha antes de los partidos. I never chase things. I never make up my mind before a game or before the play. And this is for me the biggest improvement in my game. Because I try to play in the moment and spontaneously. Like that, you, it's very hard for the opponent to defend you. Because if you prepare and if you start to make up your mind in advance, you start to be easy to, to scout. It start, you start to be easy to, uh, to play defense on you because people can predict what you're going to be, your, move, your next move. Oh, come on, man, we're going to get one. Goodness, what a rejection from Corey Higgins. <laughs> Corey Higgins elects to slow things down. Moima oh. standing strong. That is fantastic basketball. Corey Higgins, who remains perfect from downtown, 15 points in the game. Great job, eh? Try not to get a cheap one, all right? Let's prove it. Guys, hey, what is the difference right now? It's, it's fouls on Larkin. You got to go screen Larkin without making a foul. First of all, don't foul Larkin. Don't foul Larkin, hey. It's very hard to, to guard Shane without fouls, you know, because he's a guy who can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Larkin oh. with the quickness to flip it off the window. I know, as a coach, of course, you want always your defenders to play perfect defense, but Sometimes it's, it's impossible. His first step is amazing. He's quick. He's, you know, like snake. He's changing directions in full speed. Wow. Shane Larkin makes it back to back three pointers from the field. No, I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not the strongest guy. But at the end of the day, I have some advantages that other players don't, and they have some advantages that I don't have. So they try to use their size and their strength against me, and I use my speed and quickness against them. Uh, in that game, in those situations, uh, we did. And look at Dunstan, look at him. Ryan Dunstan putting his body on the line for his club. 
There's always a point, and I feel like this, this happened the, the, the past three years. There's a point in the game where we figure out what the other team can do, and we shut it off, you know? So defensively, we start making stops, like, in a row. Offensively, we start knowing exactly how they're playing, and we can, we can pick them apart. Oh, oh beautiful right. anticipation, Krenoslav Simone. Lead pass poked away by Shane Larkin. Ten years ago, if you throw somebody uh, this low pass for 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 Eliup, you know, most probably coach will kick, kick you out from the game. But Shane is great with this. Shane is American school, you know. They, are, they have that more, much more time. They they do this than than we are doing here. It's now okay, but as I said, ten years ago it was it was very dangerous. <laughs> Hung up for Sertak Shanley, who rocks the rim. I remember that play was, was, was really good. It's, it's really good for our energy. Everybody stands up and it starts cheering um, and starts clapping for us. And, you know, uh, it's important, too, because in the Final Four, there's no fans, you know. So when things go well or when things go bad, you have to be there for your teammates. So and I think we did that uh, really well in the Final Four, especially in the championship game. Larkin, he's chosen tonight to remind us of just what a top quality player he is. In those moments, you know, it's going to come down to me and Vasa in a lot of those situations. You have two guys that you can go to to close the game. You have me and you have Vasa. I believe that he has even better finishing part than me. I mean, to finish the game because he is really sharp in these moments, and that's his best quality, in my opinion. And together with him, I developed that inside of me, too, like to be focused in the last second. Mitsic splits the gap, slices to the oh, bucket, man. and his contortion in evidence once again. At the beginning, three years ago, their chemistry, their relationship wasn't really good on the court. When they were at the court together, they were... Uh, they, they didn't have correct spacing. When Vasa has the ball, Shane was too close to him, so he was affecting his positions negatively. Or when Shane was, uh, had the ball, Vasa was coming too close, and that was affecting our team spacing on the court negatively. But then, then uh, we added new plays. Also, we added some new actions into our plays that made them share the ball uh, efficiently, and then they liked it. So they liked to play on the court together. Shane and Vasa, two of the very dominant players on their positions, you can see how much they look for each other, how much they feed off of each other, and how much they're happy playing together. This is something that, that allows the team concept to work. Superstar player one, superstar player two, and playing together, uh, it, it, it brings uh, success. Then once we found that out, we really started to understand that we can both be really dominant and really, you know, successful at the same time. And then once we figured out how to do that, I think that just took our team to that next level. To take to the rack, oh. Shane Larkin demonstrating his quickness. Oh, oh, his man. geometric wizardry continues. We're not controlling our emotions, eh? We need to calm down a little bit. No, I will take the time off. Okay. I will save for the next year. <laughs> you will save? Better! Better! Give me this championship. Give me, give me. I need, I deserve about this. Two years. It's important to understand that we must use our egos for the successful of the team. We get successful to put together all of this ego and we find the most successful ego. What is the most successful ego? Is the team ego, FS ego. Either we will start to be jealous, like fighting for position, or we will try to find a way to support each other. Uh, to, to make that possible, you really need to sacrifice your ego. Uh, just to see how much we had grown together, individually as players, but also together, how we grew to kind of coexist on the court and uh, become, you know, one of the better backcourts in the league. Um, but we just had to find a way to coexist together. And um, in that final three or four minutes of that game, we really knew what we had to do. 
everything experience really shined through and I think our experience in that moment kind of just pushed us over the edge and what really gave us that extra advantage that we needed to, to become champions. And Anadolu FS Istanbul fulfilled their championship destiny. Aldrich! 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 And then I just like turned and then I saw Vasa and it was just like, he just saw me and I saw him and we knew all the work that we have done and you know how much responsibility we both have on this team. You know, when we finally saw each other, we could just, you know, embrace in that moment. I just think it was, it was just a moment of like pure happiness. Let's go, I love it. I love it. You did it. It's been a long it, road yes. for you. Two years. You've won just Two about years. it. We no. deserve about this. We talk that we, we can make it. We did it. Oh, 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 oh. I remember I hugged someone, and after that, I go to Billboard and I cry. I started basketball with Anadolu FS. It's my childhood dream. What a game, man. As a captain uh, raising that cup, it's a big honor for me. I never uh, dream of this. You think about not just winning the cup, but all season long what you've done. Uh, you know, a lot of ups and downs, uh, COVID cases. It's uh, really uh, hard to explain it, you know, with words. Runners up in 2019, the standings leaders in 2020 when the regular season was curtailed due to COVID-19. And now in 2021, for the first time in their long distinguished history, Anadolu FS Istanbul are the EuroLeague champions. After coming from being the worst team in the EuroLeague and then changing that, turning that around, becoming one of the best and then becoming the best. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. I got television MVP and I got the real MVP. Hey, man, this is like a little bit of Serbian love right here yeah, with my man course, Darko. Man. Of course, man. What do you feel like, man? What, what, what are you guys celebrating about here? You know, this morning it was uh, one funny situation. I was entering the hotel and he was there and I, I showed him my playlist. And my playlist is very old traditional Serbian music. It's uh, one of the most famous ex singer. Her name is Jovana Armenovic. I like lyrics from that time now. The lyrics are about Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, and I really don't support that. But from that time, there was more, more interesting lyrics and better music, so. I want you to sing just a little bit of one of those Serbian songs for oh, me. Just got, a little bit. It's got, it's got. It's just really a hard. No, just me, srce pati. No, just me, me. <laughs> I definitely didn't sing well because <laughs> I'm not so talented, but uh, I, I sang with emotion. <laughs> When I signed here, uh, the, the real explanation about FS for me was that FS have never had chemistry. FS have never reached a real success according to investments that they put in the club. FS always changed players. FS always changed coaches. All these stories were around me when I was signing here. And it was a fact stories. It was not like a fake stories. And when I realized that here we have everything that I was looking for, going to the relationship with the teammates and coaches, people from the club, they also started to feel more close to us, naturally, without any force. Uh, and they started to be a bigger part of their story. So that all memories came through my mind when we finally reached that 
trophy. You know, when you enter the locker room and you feel that, okay, FS became champion. FS is something that people always cross and never believe that they can reach this. And that's why I felt special with that entering the locker room and seeing all these happy faces. And it was a really unique moment. A three year, you know, journey of Ephes last in the league makes a wonderful comeback but falls short to the more experienced Seska team. It's in first place, you know, having an unbelievable season, breaking all kind of records. They're gonna go and win the championship that they didn't win. Then this virus comes out of nowhere and just <laughs> ends that whole season. And then we come back the next year and then <laughs> champion. Unbelievable story, man. So <laughs> So, this is it. I'm saying goodbye. I'm a privileged fan that had a chance to tell you about the most difficult, yet the best Turkish Airlines Euroleague season. Last but not least, I would like to look back on all basketball fans who left us this year. Wherever you are, you will be in our memories and hearts forever. We will honor you by enjoying basketball just like you did. Rest in peace.